edit mode. And I think I want them to come from kind of right up here. So let's select our faces. Come right up here. And remember, we want to do the same thing. Hit I to do a little bit of an inset. Okay, and you can see that this is kind of, uh, it's kind of rectangular. Um, and so if you want to, you can come in and try to sort of square that up a little bit. And you may have to do a little bit of uh, cleanup, but when it smooths, it'll be not so easy to tell. And then we can hit E to extrude and sort of pull this out. And I want this to be a little bit more kind of rounded off. Um, and so let's come in. I'm just going to draw this up kind of like that. And you can hit G if you want to, to just kind of move this around. G, grab there, and then we can kind of rotate this around. We can also use scale. And if I want this to really kind of be more of a square shape, which will help me just because I, I want to smooth it and I want it to be sort of round. So when we smooth this square shape, it should be pretty rounded. So we can have a little bit more control over it here. Now I do want it to be have this sort of shape, rounded shape. And so set control R. I'll add a couple of lines in here and let's go ahead and place those. And then I'm actually going to just move those up a little bit. So we get you know, something like that. Now let's take this face and I'm just going to rotate it a little bit more forward. E to extrude again. Something like that. Let's start to kind of enlarge this a little. So we can select the points. And I'll select that one on the other side as well. Let's kind of scale this up a bit. And now let's take the faces on the outside. There are several ways we can do this. I'm just going to take these ones out here. Okay. And remember on this case, we want to extrude everything out. And so we want to do a region vertex normals. I'll kind of pull it out like that. So we get something like that. And then we can, you know, if we want to kind of taper it out a little bit more, we can grab these points on the back side. S to scale, kind of pull that out a little bit. And then we can kind of pull this back. We can do the same thing here. Let's actually just grab this face in the middle. S, kind of scale this up a little. And then if we want it to be a little bit more forward facing, you could grab these points, but I think that's okay. Now let's grab these forward facing polygons. E to extrude. We'll kind of pull that out. Now, if we hit the eye icon on our subsurf and we'll make sure we're in object mode, you get something that looks kind of like that. Okay, so if you want to kind of round it off a little bit and make it a little bit more forward facing, all you have to do is go in and, and grab those points. So we can come in here and say, uh, I'm just going to grab these edges kind of all the way around, kind of move it back a little bit. Oops, and hit S and we'll kind of scale this up to, to round it off. We can also come in here and kind of move that back a little bit more and also, you know, add another edge kind of right in there. Let's kind of scale this outer edge out a little bit. Okay, you can get something like that. If you want to thin it out a little bit, you can. So the next thing we want to do is take a look at making the actual eyeballs that are going to sit inside there. And how can we create the mirror image of place it right up here? Well, we could create it at the origin and move it up there. Uh, but let's look at a different way. You see this little circle with the crosshair? It's our 3D cursor. And we can click with the left mouse button to place it within our view. Or we can come in here and place it you know, kind of around our, our model here. What this means to us as we create our geometry is that wherever 
that is, that's where our new piece of geometry is going to be created. So that only will create our geometry at the origin if our 3D cursor is also at the origin. We can move, move it to the origin um, if we want to by hitting Shift C. So you can see it popped it right to the origin. Or we can place it in a particular spot. So let's click right here to place it kind of inside of that opening there. And let's go to Create. And let's create a sphere. We're just going to do a UV sphere. You can kind of see the size of it there. And so you can decide, you know, how many rings you want it to have. I think 12 is probably good. And 12 segments is probably good as well. But I also want to rotate it. And so I can come in here and kind of rotate it around. Maybe rotate it that way a little bit. We can also change the size, so I want to make it a little bit smaller. You can see it's already pretty much in the right position. Okay, so you can see it there. Now what we can do is come in, and if we want to still uh, move it around, we can certainly do that. We can kind of grab this and kind of move it wherever we want to. But I want to add a little bit of detail. Now, if I want to kind of frame in on what I'm doing, I can hit the period key on the number pad, and that will kind of frame up on the whatever object or a piece of the object I've selected. So let's go to, uh, to edit mode. Let's select these polygons at the front. So something like that. Now I want to move those back into the sphere. You can see that because I've got this rotated, it's not wanting to move those back in the right direction. Okay, so what I want to do is change this from our transform orientation from global, and let's try local. And then that will allow me to move it straight back into there. Okay, so I'm thinking about this as the pupil, and then maybe this is the uh, iris. So I can kind of pull it back like that. We can also go to scale and sort of you know flatten it up a little. Now when we smooth this, it's going to be really, really soft. So let's if we add a modifier, we'll add a subdivision modifier. You can see how soft that is. And so we'll just use control R. Click and drag to the edge here. And same thing right there. And then we also want to do the same thing right here next to the pupil. So we'll kind of pull that down. And then if you want to do the uh, add a loop the other way, we already looked at this tool, right? What would we do? We would hit the I key to do an inset. And then I'll have the same result, okay? But so now we've got these three edges. As a general rule, when you're subdividing your geometry, three edges are going to give you a nice, tight, sort of beveled edge. And so now, if we turn that back on, you can see we get a nice, soft shape there. Okay? And we can add a little bit more detail to the, to the body by adding those edges as well. So if we can come in here if we wanted to kind of tighten up the front a little bit. You know, we could do that. You can see that kind of tightens that up a little. Okay, so once we've got one eye, uh, the next thing we want to do is kind of create the other eye. So let's take a look at mirroring separate objects. Instead of, you know, one seamless object, we want to just create a mirror image of this working on it. We've got it applied right now to the body. But if we have this eye, it's kind of a different thing. We don't want to create the other side of it. We actually want to have the whole object but a mirror image of it over to the other side. So if we just take the I and let's rename this, we'll just call this something like I. And we've got a subsurf on it already. Let's uh, let's add another modifier. This time we'll go ahead and just add a mirror. So if we add our mirror on, you can see I can change the axis here. And we can sort of see something happening, but it's not really giving us what we want. And so to really make this work easily, a lot of times at the beginning, I'll go ahead and set up a mirror object to be able to use. And so to do that, um, I just want to go ahead, and I'm going to hit Shift-C, and I'm going to come down to Create. 
and I'll make sure I'm in object mode here, and I want to create an empty. That's basically just kind of a locator or a null object. We'll create an empty, and it's going to be right at the origin. And this empty, I'm going to just call this mirror object or mirror guide or something like that. And then we can use its coordinates to mirror over the eye or anything else that we want to mirror over in our scene. So let's take our eye and let's under mirror now where it says mirror object. Let's go ahead and click there and we'll choose our mirror object that we created. Now we need to choose the axis that it's going to use. So we'll choose the Y axis and you can see it's created a mirror image over to the other side. We don't need to merge any of that. Um, and so you can see I can use X or I can use Z, but Y in this case is what we want to go across. And if you've built it, you know, facing this direction, you're going to be going across the X axis. Okay, so now whenever we have to mirror anything, for instance, if you were building a car and you had uh, wheels that you wanted to mirror over, you can set up an initial empty and use that as your mirror object. And then it's very easy. You can just use that every time, mirror it over the particular axis, and, uh, and you're good to go. Okay, so keep that in mind when you try to mirror an object like that and it's not really working the way that you want. An easy way to do that is just to have a mirror object in your scene that's at the origin and then uh, an empty object. And then you can just use that as your mirror object in the mirror modifier. And again, you can turn that uh, on and off by using the eye icon there. Okay, so... Uh, the next thing we want to do is uh, begin to add uh, some teeth. So you're in edit mode. If you then add another polygon object, it's going to actually be contained within this uh, existing object. And so if you want it to be separate, make sure you're in object mode. And then we can come in and let's create a cone as uh, kind of the basis for our, our tooth. And you can choose the, uh, the number of points. Uh, I'm going to take this down to maybe uh, eight points, so it's a little bit... Um, lower resolution. Okay, and then as far as the radius goes, we can kind of play with that and make it fairly small in the radius too, which is kind of the, the point here. And you can turn off the, the visibility of your, your guy here as well. Um, and then the depth is going to be kind of the height. So let's get something like that. We'll do uh, just an end gon for uh, the fill type. Uh, for the, yeah, so let's go ahead and go now to edit mode. And I'm going to turn off the visibility of the body here. And then I just want to use the knife to get rid of this end gone up at the top. Okay, so let's use the knife, just K to activate that. And I'm just going to draw across here. So we get something like that. Let's take the polygon on the very bottom. I'm going to delete that. Okay, and now let's use cut and slide. And so I'll add a couple of loops in here just like that. And then we can use those to uh, shape this into a tooth. So let's kind of grab these up here. And if you want it to be a bit narrower, you can kind of scale it down in one direction. Kind of do the same thing here. And then at the base, something similar. And if you want it to kind of curve a little bit, um, then you can just move these points. So something like that. Again, in the kind of anticipating that it's going to be smoothed. All right, let's turn the body back on. Let's go to solid and go to object. And now I'm just going to move this around, move it up, and I want to just rotate it down because I want this to kind of come down from the top. And I'll rotate it around this way. And this doesn't have to be perfect at all. You just want something to kind of go inside the top lip there. So you can kind of come down here. And I want to extend it out. And I want it to extend past, down past the uh, the front of the lip there. 
of the bottom lip. So maybe something like that. I want it to be a little bit sort of cartoony there. Now in order to duplicate this, we can hit, oops, hold on a second. Hit Shift D and we can pull this over and then we can rotate that one. You can see it actually created a whole new object. So we can kind of, you know, if we want to scale it, we can, you know, position it and rotate it a little bit differently. I don't want it to penetrate in. Shift D again and we can drag to a new spot. And again, we've created another copy. We can do the same thing over here. Maybe this one is uh, maybe a little bit smaller and maybe it's sort of angled out a little bit more. Depends on the look that you want to get. Maybe a bit smaller there. So then you just want to do the same thing over here. Right click to select it. Shift D. And we can sort of place it very quickly. Kind of rotate it or move it using the uh, G R keys. Shift D again. This time we'll kind of move it out that way. So something like that. Okay, so once we've got all these teeth, they're all separate pieces, which may be what you want. But in some cases, you may want these to all be part of the same piece of geometry. Remember we talked about if you were to create them in edit mode, they'd be all part of the same piece. So what if we have these pieces that we that are separate now and we want them to be part of the same piece? Well, we can actually go in and select them. So I'm just going to shift click on all of these. Okay. And we want to join these together. So I'm just going to hit control J to join those. And you can see that now we have a single object here. If you go to object, you'll see join is right up here and you can set, tell the, the hotkey right here, join. So control J will allow you to join those together. So now we have one single object. We can call this something like teeth. And then to that teeth, we can go make sure we're on the wrench, add modifier. We can add a subdivision surface to make sure that's, that those teeth are nice and smooth. All right, so there are our teeth. Now, the body is really very plain. There's not a lot of detail. We just kind of basically built up this real simple shape. So in the next lesson, let's take a look at using the uh, multi-res sculpt modifier with the sculpting tools here in Blender to kind of create a little bit more interesting uh, shape. So let's take the body. And right now we have a subdivision, a subsurface modifier on it. And so uh, let's go ahead and get rid of that. We can do that by just hitting the X. And you can see here's our very low res geometry. So let's add a modifier now. So we'll come in here. And actually, before we do that, let's actually go ahead and take this mirror and let's bake it down. So what we want to do is we want to delete the modifier, but we want to apply what this modifier is doing for us. So that'll give us kind of both sides of the geometry. So let's say apply and that'll, you can see, get rid of the modifier, but now we just have our basic shape. So now it's not being driven by the mirror modifier. So if I were to make some changes on one side, they wouldn't be uh, mirrored over on the other. Okay. Unless I'm using some sort of symmetry. So let's now add a new modifier. This time we'll add multi-resolution. All right, so it's showing you the type of resolution that's going to use Catmull Clark is what we're going to do, and then preview, sculpt, and render. So what I want to do is start to add some subdivision levels here. So if we hit subdivide, you can see that that actually goes in and subdivide, subdivides the surface. Now let's go into sculpt mode, and this will allow us to use different kinds of sculpt tools to modify this geometry. I can click on here and I can bring up lots of different kinds of these brushes. We have lots of settings down here that we can use. If we go all the way down in the bottom, you'll see there's a symmetry. So we want to mirror our strokes in the Y direction. Okay. And so we need to turn on uh, mirroring in the Y. Okay. Now let's go ahead. I'm going to choose uh, this grab. I'm going to come in here and you can see 
that as I modify these points and just click and kind of pull them out, it's kind of like a soft select, you can see that the model is changing on both sides. So we can come in here and kind of modify the overall uh, shape of things. You can also change the size of your brush or your strength. All right, and if you want to change this uh, just by using a hotkey, you can hit F and that'll allow you to kind of change that value. We can drag and then you can modify that. I'm using, uh, now I've changed over to using a, a Wacom device. So anytime you do sculpting, that's gonna be really valuable, uh, valuable thing to do. It's gonna be a little bit harder to use kind of a, just a mouse, but you can do it. So we can come in here and kind of shape this and I'm still at a you know fairly low level here. Now when we're ready to move on, we can hit subdivide and you can see that this is gonna change. And so now we're on the next level and so we can make some finer adjustments here. Kind of come in maybe around the, uh, the mouth, shape that a little bit more. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and subdivide this a couple more times and we'll start use some of this, using some of these other uh, tools. So we could come in and we could use, let's say, uh, let's say we can use clay strips. I like that one. Um, and so we can change the brush size using F. We can use Shift F to change the strength from one down. So um, you can see we can come in here and start to make these sort of strips. Now you're not getting a ton of detail here. And you can see it's really faceted. And we can go in with the shift key afterwards and kind of smooth out what we've done. But I can come in and start to define some kind of overall shapes. Let's come in uh, kind of around the, the mouth, kind of add a little bit of sort of volume around the mouth and kind of smooth that back out. We can also come in and add maybe like a little chin shape. Again, smoothing that back out. Let's subdivide again. Now we're up to level five here. So you can move in a little bit closer and maybe even start to get a little bit more of that flap coming around the side of the cheek. Kind of define that a little bit more. We can also start to you know come around the eye and add a little bit of detail. So just have a little bit of fun with it. Um, anywhere that you have a, uh, anywhere that you have sort of a, a wrinkle like that, an existing kind of spot, I would come in and just add a little bit of overlap to that and kind of smooth it back out. Kind of do the same thing here. Smooth it back out and just add a little bit of detail there. You can come underneath and start to add some little strips here. Kind of smooth that back out. We can also do kind of the reverse where we change up and instead of using the clay strips, we could use crease. And this will allow us to draw in these sort of lines and wrinkles. So you can see here, I'm kind of coming in and adding those. Okay, if I hold down control, that'll allow me to, instead of pushing in, it'll allow me to raise it up. So you can see it's pulling it out instead of pushing it in. So let's increase our strength a little bit more. And I think I wanna move in just a bit. And you can kind of create a nice crease there. That's probably too much, so let's reduce that a little bit more. Um, another thing that you can do is come in and under the curve presets, you can choose different presets here as well. So let's kind of draw in the side there. And you can see where it's sort of creating these, uh, these dots. We can come down to the stroke spacing 
and we can kind of reduce that amount. I'll give you a little bit of a maybe smoother line there. And we can come in and kind of create these divisions. You can do the same thing up here, you know, on the head, um, but you could do it, you know, make it very a very uh, small sort of strength. We can also use it to really sharpen up the edge of this lip. Okay, and we can come in and kind of define the chin a little bit better. Let's take our strength. Uh, down a little bit. So there you can see we're getting these sort of wrinkles, but it's very fine. So I just kind of spend a little bit of time doing that across the surface and kind of get the, the uh, overall kind of detail that you want. I'm just going to add a few wrinkles up in there. Um, these little bits down here, we can come in and if we want to sort of flatten those, um, we can come in and we can use polish or flatten, either one, and come in and sort of flatten those off. Right in there, something like that. Yeah, maybe where this is sitting on the ground, we can kind of flatten these off as well. And you just want to add a little bit. You can see here where my eyes um, sort of penetrating through the back right there. If you want to go down to lower level, you can just kind of come down and we can go to lower levels here. Go back and get our grab, get a larger size that you could just kind of pull that out. Okay, and then you can go back up, and it's all it all propagates up and down these uh, subdivision levels that we're working with, and then you know you can come in and maybe get your crease, and I think I want a smaller size, so you know kind of add a little bit of detail, kind of right around the the eye there, come in around the mouth and. You know, detail that cheek a little bit better. Just kind of smooth that part out. So you can do a whole lot better than uh, than I've done, but those are the kind of brushes that we can start with. Um, and so I really like the the clay strips. You've got the also got the basic um, draw, uh, but also grab, flatten, polish, and then a lot of custom uh, brushes here. Crease is really good too. So I'd encourage you to check those out. There's lots of settings in here that you can do, but those are the basics as far as that goes. So have a little fun with that uh, and uh, kind of creating your own little creature and kind of sculpting in some, some details. If you want to pull off, you know, some little bitty horns or things like that, you can uh, feel free to do that. So the next thing that we're going to do is uh, take a look at how we can start to use some noise to add kind of even some more high resolution detail 